A lot of us really don't think too much about the food we eat. It comes from the grocery store. It's got to be good, right? The big companies running those places would never try to sell us something harmful or gross, right? Well, sometimes it pays to look a little deeper into the food we're eating, since most of us aren't farming our own. From the dark side of the meat industry to cheese that isn't really cheese, here's 20 foods you'll never buy again after knowing how they're made. <sighs> Number 20. Meat Production Unfortunately, the bulk of the meat we consume now originates from industrial farms. Crowded farms where output takes precedence above meat quality and animal welfare. You've definitely heard about the nightmare of factory farming from vegans and vegetarians, or maybe an ethical meat consumer, but there's a lot more regarding meat production that will make you want to avoid it. In fact, you'll never eat this again after knowing how it's made. A word of caution, if you're planning on having turkey burgers for dinner, you should think again. According to a Food and Drug Administration investigation, antibiotic-resistant bacteria were found in 81% of all raw ground turkey tested in research. Antibiotic-resistant bacteria, properly known as superbugs, were discovered in 69% of pork chops and 39% of chicken. Why are superbugs being found in meat? Animals, on the other hand, are given antibiotics as a prophylactic step to keep them from getting sick. This is a normal technique in livestock management, according to the National Chicken Council. Certain forms of bacteria are developing resistance to antibodies as a result of frequent exposure. Fortunately, most antibodies used to treat people are not used on chickens, so if you become ill from the superbugs detected in your meat, you will most likely be able to receive treatment. But the issue remains, how many medicines are available, and how long will it be until superbugs develop resistance to many, if not all, medications? Before we go on, like this video, smash that subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Shredded Cheeses The grated Parmesan cheese in the green shaker tube, which is usually found beside dry pastas and canned tomato sauces on the grocery store shelves, may not be precisely what is being advertised. Back in Italy, no one claims it's made from cow's milk. Many of these cheese products, including those manufactured by Kraft Heinz and marketed as store brands in Walmart and Albertsons, contain up to 9% cellulose. It's a wood pulp or plant fiber derivative used to prevent clumping and allow cheese to flow freely through the lid's preparations. They also include potassium sorbate, a preservative that prevents mold and increases the shelf life of dried fruits, pastries, and wines. Both are typical food additives that are fairly safe to consume. Nonetheless, the two substances, notably wood pulp, are at the core of a court struggle that is ongoing. It's all about product labeling and what exactly qualifies as pure Parmesan, the American equivalent to the famed Parmigiano-Reggiano hard cheese. Although the thought of eating powdered wood may give you pause, food experts, many of whom work for, uh, Walmart in some capacity, believe cellulose is a safe substance. It exists naturally in plant walls, thus it may be extracted from wood, apple pulp, or maize cobs, according to John Cupland, a Penn State food scientist. It's eaten anytime we eat broccoli, celery, or any other vegetable. Still, I'd prefer my cheese to be, well, you know, cheese. Number 18. Hot dogs. Hot dogs, America's greatest culinary creation, right? And what could be better to start the day than a hot dog and a soda? Uh, a lot of stuff, actually. Processed meats are among the worst things you can put into your body. They're heavy in salt and saturated fats, not the beneficial type like those found in coconut. And they're loaded with sodium nitrate, a popular preservative used to impart color and taste to meats, as well as other chemicals and coloring. Consumption of processed meats is linked to an increased risk of coronary heart disease and type 2 diabetes. A high consumption of red and processed meat is linked to an elevated risk of colorectal, colon, and rectal cancer. Get rid of the hot dogs if you want to lower your cancer risk. But it might have been considerably worse in the past. Since the 1800s, the term dog has been used as a synonym for sausage, probably due to claims that sausage producers utilize dog flesh in their sausages. During the 19th and 20th centuries, dog meat was popular in German regions such as Saxony, Silesia, Anhalt, and Bavaria. 
meat trimmings and fat, i.e. mechanically separated meat, pink slime, meat slurry, are now more common hot dog sausage components. Seasonings like salt, garlic, and paprika, and preservatives such as sodium erythorbate and sodium nitrate are commonly used. Gross! Number 17. Coffee creamer can contain titanium dioxide, which can also be found in paint, plastic, and sunscreen. Non-dairy creamers frequently contain hydrogenated vegetable oils to mimic the mouthfeel of fats, while non-fat non-dairy creamers and whiteners are also available. And yes, mouthfeel is really a word. Various typical components include solidified corn syrup and other sweetenings or flavorings, such as French vanilla, hazelnut, and Irish cream, as well as sodium caseinate, a lactose-free milk protein derivative. Titanium dioxide is a food ingredient found in a range of foods such as ranch dressing, coffee creamer, frosting, and powdered sugar. It's frequently used to make whites look whiter. However, it can also be found in paint, sunscreen, and laundry detergent for the same purpose. Hmm. While the FDA deems it safe, studies have connected it to inflammatory bowel illness, and the International Agency for Research on Cancer classified it as a possible carcinogenic to humans. Also, large volume of powdered non-dairy creamer powder, like many other powders, are subject to dust explosion when suspended in air. Amateur filmmakers and pyrotechnologists technicians have used this characteristic to create a variety of fireball effects. Folks who use powdered non-dairy creamer in the proportions commonly used in a cup of coffee are probably not in danger of a dust explosion. But maybe don't light candles next time you have an awful cup of coffee. Number 16. Pretzels. Pretzels were the perfect snacky wolf disguised as a sheep. Who didn't pound them while watching TV years ago, believing they were fat-free? What a culinary 180 we have for you. Pretzels are all refined carbohydrates. In other words, you'd be better off eating jelly beans. They include no fiber, protein, or healthy fat to keep you satiated or to offer health advantages to the calories you eat. Instead, go for a modest handful of nuts or other fiber-rich snacks. Diets high in fiber whole grains are linked to a decreased risk of coronary heart disease and type 2 diabetes, according to research. It's also been demonstrated that people who consume whole grains rather than processed grains have improved lipid profiles and glycemic management. Pretzels are typically dusted with salt in Europe, though they can also be sprinkled with sesame seed, poppy seed, or cheese. In the United States, they're available in a wide range of flavors and coatings, including yogurt, chocolate, strawberry, mustard, cinnamon sugar, cheese, and others. And chocolate-covered hard pretzels are popular as Christmas presents. In the marketing of the flavor of pretzels, the variety of forms and size became a contest of imagination. People in Philadelphia use the short, narrow pretzel stick as a complement to ice cream, or crumbled pretzels as a topping throughout the 1900s. For many years, this mix of cool, sweet, and salty flavors was highly popular. This eventually led to the creation of an ice cream cone that tastes like a pretzel. Number 15. White chocolate isn't actually chocolate. White chocolate is a delicate, ivory-colored chocolate confection prepared from cocoa butter, sugar, milk solids, and sometimes vanilla. White chocolate lacks the cocoa solids present in other forms of chocolate, such as milk chocolate and dark chocolate. White chocolate, despite its name, does not contain any true chocolate components. The snack is made primarily of sugar, milk products, vanilla, lecithin, and cocoa butter. Nestle, a Swiss firm, and FYI, literally always the bad guys, introduced the white chocolate Gallic to Europe in 1937. Other firms created their own formula, such as the one created in 1945 by Kuno Baedeker for the Merkins Chocolate Company. Nestle created Alpine White, a white chocolate bar with almond bits, for markets in the United States and Canada from around 1948 through the 1990s. Hershey launched commercial manufacture of white Hershey Kisses in the 1990s, a product that broadened in the early 21st century to include the Hug, a chocolate white dark swirl kiss. The European Food Safety Authority proposes prohibiting the food coloring chemical E171, which is used as a common whitener in some white chocolate products, as of May 2021. Number 14. Gummy Candies 
Gummy bears are a popular snack amongst both youngsters and adults. Although they include protein, these sweet snacks are not especially nutritious. Even sugar-free gummy bears have drawbacks. Fortunately, you can simply create your own gummy bears and transform them into a nutritious snack. Despite their many colors and flavors, the components of Haribo gummy bears are all specified as the same. Haribo Gold Bears gummy bears have 100 calories, 23 grams of carbs, and 2 grams of protein per serving. 13 pieces, or 30 grams. Each serving of gummy bears has 14 grams of sugar, which implies that each gummy bear contains more than one gram of sugar. Bye bye teeth! According to the Food and Drug Administration, added sugar should account for no more than 10% of your daily calories. Because carbs like sugar provide 4 calories per gram, most people should limit their daily intake to 200 calories, or 50 grams of added sugars. However, gummy bears aren't as awful as many other junk food products when it comes to junk food. Assuming no additional added sugars were consumed, you could have had many servings of the Haribo gummy bears and yet stayed under the FDA's guideline. However, with this much sugar, the health advantage advantages of gummy bears are modest. More than 3.5 servings of gummy bears per day would lead to a very poor diet. Number 13. Diet Soda Simply because something is calorie-free does not imply that it is chemical-free. You wouldn't chug Drano, would you? Even though Diet Coke contains no calories, artificial sweeteners are known to activate insulin, which sends your body into fat storage mode and may contribute to weight gain. So really, it should be called the terrible Diet Coke. When compared to normal soda, Diet Soda has also been related to an increased risk of metabolic syndrome. So what role does Diet Soda play in weight gain? While diet soda has no actual sugar or calories, it does include a number of chemicals and artificial substances, including sweeteners. These components are heavy in artificial compounds, which might trigger your body to seek additional high-calorie sugary meals. Artificial sweeteners may also lead your body to miscalculate the quantity of calories you're ingesting, causing your metabolism to stall and making it more difficult to burn calories and lose weight. Numerous studies have been conducted, all of which link diet soda to an increased risk of cardiac issues, such as congestive heart failure, heart disease, and or heart attacks. Who's the major offender? It's artificial sweeteners, including aspartame, once again. Other health concerns that might result from diet soda intake, such as weight gain, elevated blood sugar levels, and diabetes, can also attribute to cardiac problems. Number 12. Farm-raised salmon is naturally white and then dyed pink. While wild salmon are naturally pink due to their high shrimp consumption, farm-raised fish eat differently. Salmon producers add carotenoids, plant pigments, to fish feed to match the natural color of wild salmon in order to create that appealing pink tint. The pink hue is added to farm-raised salmon, which is normally gray. Because of their diet, which includes axtosathin, a reddish-orange chemical found in krill and shrimp, wild salmon is naturally pink. Although salmon is frequently advised as a part of a healthy diet, there is ongoing disagreement regarding whether it's preferable to consume farmed or wild salmon, and whether one variety in particular is particularly unhealthy. Salmon, which is high in heart-healthy omega-3 fatty acids, is a low-calorie protein source that is also low in saturated fat. The American Heart Association recommends eating at least 3.5-ounce portions of fatty fish, such as salmon, per week. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration and the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency are now advising pregnant and nursing women, who've traditionally been cautioned from eating too much seafood, to eat at least two servings per week as well. Furthermore, farm salmon has been discovered to contain hazardous substances, such as methyl mercury and dioxins, and farms have been accused of polluting the oceans, spreading sickness, and encouraging disease. Salmon farms have also been chastised for other dubious methods, such as the feed composition, which is frequently augmented with pesticides to give their fish that pink hue. Number 11. Processed Pastries a long shelf life and a long list of ingredients are obvious signs that you should pass on a food. Refined sugar, refined wheat flour, hydrogenated oils, unhealthy trans fats, and a slew of additional chemicals and artificial substances go into processed pastries. 
Trans fat has been linked to coronary heart disease, sudden cardiac death, and diabetes. And if you must have sweets with your milk, prepare it from scratch and use high quality ingredients. What makes some processed meals unhealthy? Ingredients like salt, sugar, and fat are occasionally added to processed foods to improve their flavor and shelf life, or in certain circumstances to contribute to the food structure, like salt in bread, or sugar in cakes. European pastry heritage is typically linked back to the short crust era of flaky doughs used throughout the Mediterranean in ancient times. Philo style pastries were popular among the Romans, Greeks, and Phoenicians in the ancient Mediterranean. Aristophanes' comedies, written in the 5th century BC, make mention to sweetmeats, particularly miniature pastries stuffed with fruit. So that's the way to do it if you want a pastry. Number 10. The red food dye used in Skittles is made from boiled beetles. Carmen, or carminic acid, is a popular red food color found in Skittles, maraschino cherries, raspberry and strawberry flavored junk food, and even lipstick. Carminic acid, which is taken from scale insects, such as the cochineal scale and certain pyrophoria species, is used to make the pigment. Carmine is also found in fake flowers, paintings, red ink, rouge, and other cosmetics, as well as some pharmaceuticals. The powdered scale insects carcasses are cooked in an ammonia or sodium carbonate solution to make carmine. The extract is treated with alum after the insoluble stuff has been separated to precipitate the red solid. This precipitate is referred to as carmine lake or crimson lake. The lack of iron ensures color purity. To alter the precipitation, stannous chloride, citric acid, borax, or gelatin may be added. The classic crimson hue is influenced not only by carminic acid, but also by the chelating metal salt ion chosen. Lime is added to the alum to create purple colors. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration reviewed a proposal in January 2006 that would require food items containing carmine to disclose it by name on the ingredient label. Number 9. Raw oysters are still alive when you eat them. When you eat raw oysters, chances are they're still alive. Oysters decay so swiftly that cooks must serve them as soon as possible, essentially while they're still alive. Some shellfish can live out of the water for up to two weeks, which is why oysters are preserved in carefully controlled conditions. They're no longer safe to consume once they've died. So, if you're eating fresh oysters, you're probably chewing on them while they're still alive. Because oysters lack central neural systems, they can't feel pain. Oysters that don't open are typically thought to be dead, and so are unsafe to eat. And bacteria can be found in oysters. Because oysters are filter feeders, they naturally concentrate everything in the surrounding water. In the summer months, oysters from the Gulf Coast of the United States, for example, have significant bacterial loads of human diseases, most notably Vibrio vulnificus and Vibrio parahemolyticus. Number 8. Most wasabi is actually just dried horseradish. If you prefer to put hot wasabi all over your California roll, be aware that you're most likely eating colored horseradish. About 99% of wasabi marketed in the United States is phony, and the real thing can only be found in a high-end sushi restaurant in Japan. Wasabi costs $80 a pound, so restaurants can save money by using an imitation instead. According to a new video from the American Chemical Society, the great majority of wasabi consumed in America is essentially a combination of horseradish, fiery mustard, and green dye. In Japan, the real wasabi plant grows naturally along stream beds and highland river basins. The two most common cultivators on the market are Daruma and Mazuma, but there are several more. Wasabi as a food first appears in the 8th century AD. Wasabi's popularity in English-speaking nations has grown in tandem with that of sushi, beginning in about 1980. Wasabi is often ingested in such small amounts that its nutritional value is insignificant. Number 7. Nutmeg. Nutmeg is an excellent addition to a hot beverage, but don't use too much. Eating too much nutmeg can produce psychedelic effects such as out-of-body experiences, nausea, dizziness, and slow brain function. However, it takes a lot of nutmeg, more than two teaspoons, to experience the spice's drug-like effects. So don't be too concerned. The oldest evidence of nutmeg usage comes from 3,500-year-old pottery remains from Palau Ai, one of the Banda Islands in eastern Indonesia. The Banda Islands are a collection of 11 tiny volcanic islands that make up the Maluku Islands. Until the mid-19th century, these islands were the exclusive source of nutmeg and mace production. 
Nutmeg spread to India in the 6th century AD, then further west to Constantinople. By the 13th century, Arab traders had traced nutmeg's origins to the Indonesian islands, but they kept this information hidden from European traders. It's been proposed that Connecticut got its moniker, the Nutmeg State, from the idea that certain unscrupulous Connecticut traders would chisel nutmeg out of wood, resulting in a wooden nutmeg, a word that would eventually come to denote any form of fraud. This story may be related to the fact that one must grate rather than shatter a nutmeg to produce the spice powder, which may not have been commonly understood by certain product consumers. Number 6. Blue Cheese Blue cheese is a moldy cheese prepared from cows, sheep, or goat's milk and matured with cultures of the mold Penicillium, a species of fungus present in nature that's responsible for food deterioration. You've come to the right place if you've ever wondered why blue cheese is okay to eat, yet other moldy items aren't. Is it okay to eat blue cheese? Blue cheese is a type of aid cheese that has been grown with the mold Penicillium, which gives it its particular look, texture, flavor, and perfume. Blue cheese is safe to consume because the acidity, saltiness, and wetness of the cheese prevent the mold from creating mycotoxins and aflatoxins, two toxins that are dangerous to people. Mycotoxins have the potential to harm your respiratory system, weaken your immune system, and possibly cause cancer. Aflatoxins, on the other hand, are toxins that are toxic, carcinogenic, and mutagenic, aka they cause alterations of your cell's genetic material. Other molds, such as Penicillium Roqueforti, which is used to make French Roquefort, Danish Blue, and English Stilton cheese, Penicillium Glaucum, which is used to make French Bleu de Avergine, Italian Gorgonzola, and Penicillium Camemberti, which is used to make the German Cambonzola, are safe because they do not produce mycotoxins or aflatoxins when cultured as cheese. Number 5. French Fries French fries are unquestionably among the most delicious and comforting dishes. Not only that, but potato fries are so addicting that no one can eat just one. Here's what you need to know if you always order fries with your burger or pizza. In the long term, eating too many fries might be harmful for your health. The most serious risk is that it can raise your chances of dying prematurely. That's bad. Because fries are cooked in hydrogenated oils, they include a significant level of trans fat, which elevates bad cholesterol while decreasing good cholesterol. This raises your chances of developing heart disease. According to another study, those with higher level of trans fats in their blood are 75% more likely to acquire Alzheimer's disease or dementia. A high-fat, greasy diet can harm the microbiome by promoting harmful bacteria and reducing immunity. According to research, eating fried food three times or more each week raises one's odds of having a heart attack or stroke by 7%. If they ate fried food every day, their risk increased by 15%. Foods that are fried in oil become calorie bombs, contributing to weight gain. According to a research published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, consuming fried meals is directly related to obesity. Number 4. Apple Juice Doesn't apple juice sound like a healthy drink? Many parents have it as a healthier alternative to sugary beverages and sodas. However, a recent study makes surprising assertions about the prevalence of arsenic in apple juice. Arsenic is a naturally occurring element in the environment that may be found in rocks, soil, water, air, plants, and animals. Some agriculture and industrial sources can also emit it to the environment. According to the American Cancer Society, food is the most common source for arsenic for most individuals. However, most of it is likely to be in a less harmful organic form. Seafood, rice, rice cereal, mushrooms, chicken, and apple juice all have the greatest quantities of arsenic in diets. However, many other foods may have modest levels of arsenic. Arsenic was combined with vinegar and chalk and consumed by women in the Victorian era to enhance the complexion of their faces, making their skin lighter. The Bradford sweet poisoning in 1858 was caused by the unintentional use of arsenic in foodstuffs. Wallpaper manufacturers also began to employ arsenic dyes, which were considered to boost the brightness of pigment, but also made the inhabitants look whiter too, like deathly whiter. Number 3. Chicken Nuggets the golden fried batter of chicken nuggets may appear attractive on the surface, but what's inside is considerably more frightening. White chicken flesh from the breast or pectoral muscles of the birds is used to make chicken nuggets, and other chicken parts can be added as well. 
tendons, bones, nerve, and connective tissues, and fat may all be ground up and formed into bite-sized bits. According to research, chicken nuggets include more fat than meat, as well as bone, nerve, and connective tissue. Of course, different manufacturers and brands have different formulations, which are typically close-guarded secrets. Some may have more meat and less additives or other ingredients, but once you learn how chicken nuggets are manufactured, you'll want to avoid them. Chicken nuggets are often viewed as a greasy, unhealthy meal. Research published in the American Journal of Medicine evaluated the content of chicken nuggets from two American fast food companies. It discovered that skeletal muscle made up less than half of the material, with fat accounting for an equal or higher amount. Epithelial tissue, bone, neurological tissue, and connective tissue were also present. According to the writers, chicken nuggets are mostly fat and their name is a misnomer. Number 2. Soy sauce. Soy sauce is derived from fermented soybeans and wheat and is a delicious condiment. It's believed to have originated in China and has been used in cooking for over a thousand years. It's currently one of the most well-known soy products in the world. It's a common element in many Asian nations and is extensively used across the rest of the world. The method of production might vary greatly resulting in considerable differences in flavor and texture, as well as health hazards. Soy sauce is a salty liquid condiment made by fermenting soybeans and wheat. It's supposed to have originated around 3,000 years ago from a Chinese product called Chang. Similar items have been created in Japan, Korea, Indonesia, and other Southeast Asian countries. It initially arrived in Europe in the late 1600s as a result of Dutch and Japanese trade. Soy is derived from the Japanese term for soy sauce, shoyu. In reality, the soy bean was named after soy sauce. Soy sauce is made out of four fundamental ingredients soybeans, wheat, salt, and fermentation agents, such as mold or yeast. Regional soy sauces may contain various portions of these compounds, resulting in a variety of hues and tastes. Chemical manufacturing is a significantly faster and less expensive way of producing soy sauce. This process is known as acid hydrolysis, and it may generate soy sauce in a matter of days rather than months. Soybeans are heated to around 176 degrees Fahrenheit and combined with hydrochloric acid in this method. This mechanism degrades the proteins in soybeans and wheat. However, because several chemicals created during conventional fermentation are lacking, the final product is less appealing in terms of flavor and scent. As a result, more color, taste, and salt are added. Furthermore, this technique creates several unwanted components that are not found in naturally fermented soy sauce, such as carcinogens. Number 1. Kapi Luwak Kapi Luwak is one of the world's most costly coffees. And can you guess what it's composed of? Poop! It's manufactured from coffee beans that have been consumed and digested by civet cats and then passed through their excrement. The coffee beans are fermented as they pass through the civet cat. It must be good enough. It's sold at $700 a kilogram. The cherries ferment as they transit through the intestines of a civet and they're collected after being defecated with other fecal debris. Asian palm civets are increasingly being captured and trafficked in the wild for this purpose. Damn. Who was the first person who thought, hmm, I want to drink that? Kapi Luwak is mostly grown on the Indonesian islands of Sumatra, Javi, Bali, and Sulawesi, as well as in East Timor. It's also frequently harvested in the forests or farmed in the Philippine Islands. Well, are you feeling hungry after all that? Will you be more careful about what you eat from now on? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.